Today it's time to grab your brushes and paint with Idik. Next speaking and welcome to this video. Right today I am going to be doing some painting. As you can see I've got these dark ops generators which I'm painting as necron pieces of terrain. So I thought I would make a paint with Idik video. It's been over a year since I made the last one so it's about time. So yeah it's basically going to be a chilled chat along with painting. So grab your brushes and paint along with me. Okay so I have got to work out how I'm going to paint these things to match my board. Now I've been thinking about it and I think what I'm going to do is this section in here I'm going to paint in silver along with this section in the top although this will then be gone over with a green and then I'll do silver on these sections and I think the rest I'm just going to paint green uh, maybe yeah I think the rest is just going to be green and then I'll have silver or gold symbols on the top so I think that's the plan I've got to start somewhere so I figure the best thing to do is just get some silver down and go from there so the silver that I'm going to be using, I've got my paints out, I've got Iron Breaker, I'm going to start off with that, I'm going to basically do some dry brushing. So what I've done is I've made a little list of some topics that I want to talk about in this video. It's going to be unedited and uh, yeah, maybe some mistakes will happen, but who cares, that's what this is about. This is just a chilled video. And that funny noise is me shaking the paint. Of course, the metallics you do really have to paint, uh, really have to shake. In actual fact, I think my tennis elbow probably may have come from doing the shaking. Now I've got my lights fairly low powered because I don't want them to run out of uh, battery power that quickly. So the footage may be a little bit darker than normal. I've got the ISO up a little bit so hopefully it's not too bad um, but I very much doubt you're going to be watching me you're probably going to be painting yourself. So I've got my wet palette, my cloth and my tissue paper. I'm going to do some dry brushing. So originally um, my idea was with these type of videos, the paint along ones, is I was going to end up going live with them um, but I just I just don't think I'm ready to go live um, on YouTube I did some tests on Facebook I uh, did a couple of live um, streams there and I have to say I, I did enjoy them a lot actually but um, I did two which I, which I thought went really well and I really did enjoy them then the third one, I didn't feel like went quite as well. I think I just ran out of things to say. Um, and yeah, I just didn't feel that confident really, to be fair. I just don't think live videos are for me. I think I'd rather edit them and you know, record and edit them. I mean, this is gonna be fairly unedited. But I do have the security, if it goes totally wrong, that I can just edit it. That's going to look pretty cool, I think. Now, this is the, the problem I've got, is getting the paintbrush into these middle sections. Hopefully, it's going to be okay. It's going to be a bit awkward, though, I think. Okay, not too bad. Mm. Definitely going to need some more paint. I think this is going to have to go on a bit thicker because not only am I trying to cover up the black but where I couldn't get in properly with the spray paint I actually used uh, tin cans you know to prime these it's not necessarily covered that well either the black in some of the areas that they, the basically the spray just can't get to I probably should have gone in with a paintbrush first with the black, but I think it'd be all right. Let's just just try and get the paintbrush in there the best I can. Very awkward, but 
not impossible. So yeah, uh, for now, I think the live shows are out. Um, also, I'm not particularly technical, to be honest, so, I don't know, I just feel just a bit nervous about the whole live show thing, so that probably isn't going to happen anytime soon, but more paint, I need a lot of, a lot of gold paint, uh, silver paint here, but I think this might be an alternative. So, quite a number of new releases just gone past and also coming up. So let's have a little chat about them. So, first of all, I'm going to talk about Kill Team. So of course, as you know, I haven't got into Kill Team at all. Um, from the channel point of view, that's probably a bad idea because you know, Kill Team is the hot topic at the moment. But I'm not going to you know, play a game just for the channel. I just make videos on a particular topic just for the channel. You know, the channel is my hobby. And if my hobby isn't Kill Team, then I'm you know, not going to make videos on it. I have had request for, uh, requests for videos on Kill Team. Um, but I've just been directing the people to the Kill Team channels um, as much as I can. So, yeah, so the reason why I'm not doing a Kill Team is, hmm, I wonder if I could just do the hot, yes, I think I might do that. I have green on the side, but this top section, all of that top section, silver, and then the middle section will be the green glow. And then I can do this, ah uh, yeah, then I can do this outside section silver, that might be pretty cool. Okay, that's going to be the new plan. Um, I can't remember what I was talking about, oh yeah, Kill Team. So, <clears throat> yeah, I don't really have much interest. A, I just don't want to learn a new, new game, and let's face it, although it is still 40k, it's effectively got totally new rules. So I'm not sure I want to do that. B, Got no one to play it with because well, I can hardly get a game of 40k in my buddy at the moment where he's so busy renovating his house that Kill Team just isn't going to happen. So that's another reason why. Um, and B, obviously it's an investment of money as well to do that gaming system. And I just, I'm happy with 40k, you know, I'm not really into small skirmish games. I prefer the bigger games, so... That's why I'm not really doing Kill Team. I know a lot of people, a lot of people really like it. I can understand why people will like it. Um, you know, it's got some good, good things about it. Like I said, it's just, it's not for me. Okay, I have to see how that looks, but I think that's gonna work. I might have to go around that outside edge with silver, just have that inside edge. Gonna have to see how it looks, I think. I don't know about you, but I do play it by ear a little bit when I'm painting, so I work out certain sections, and then once I've painted those ones, I'll just see how it looks before I go on to any other sections. So, yeah, kill team, that's kill team. What else? Well, we've had the Warhammer Conquest, isn't it called? The new hmm, subscription magazine thing. Well, when it first came out, I thought, oh, here we go, you know, there's going to be like a billion videos on this thing. And I didn't really pay that much attention. Um, but I thought. And obviously from the videos, everyone was saying how great value it is. And of course it had Primary Space Marines in issue one. So I thought, well, my daughter, obviously is doing Primary Space Marines, Primary Space Marines, um, would l probably love it. So I thought, well, I'll go in um, to not my local news agents and see if they've got one. Maybe pick her up one. So that's what I did. I went into it. Oop. And yeah, I saw them and 
saw that they had some black paint in there, which is typically what, how much is a black paint? Well, it's just over three pound, isn't it? And this magazine was one pound 99, and it had the black paint in, some gold paint, some blue paint, and a uh, paintbrush. And I thought, wow, that is like such good value for money. I've got to buy that. And I bought five five packs, so it's a tenner. I thought, yeah, you know, worth a tenner for everything we get there. And obviously it's got the three, but don't forget the three Primaris Space Marines in. So I'm gonna give the paintbrushes, the Primaris Space Marines to my daughter. Obviously the paint will just share as and when we need paint. Uh, but uh, yeah, what great value. Now issue two has got some Death Guard in. I think it's the three models that's already in my first strike box set. Uh, so, uh, and I think it's got some dice and maybe the gaming mat. Not quite so, um, so good, I don't think. And £4.99 for issue two. And then I think they go up to £7.99. So they gradually get you hooked in, put the price up. Still amazing value for money, $4.99, even the $7.99 one's very good value. Of course, ultimately, they want you to take the subscription up. I've been told that the news agents are only going to have it in the shops for the first four weeks, which is what they seem to be advertising on the front of the issue one. And then you've obviously got to pay for the subscription. Now, I do believe that it's excellent value for money and an awesome way to get a couple of armies together and even though my daughter and I are doing both of those two armies which is a bit of a coincidence I don't think I'm going to actually do the subscription I've been stung before with subscriptions um, mainly like Star Trek and Star Wars is it? I can't remember the name now I think it begins with a D you know when you collect and you get the magazines every month and you put them in folders and stuff? They seem to be never ending. And I cancelled both of mine in the end. I mean, I've, I've had like five, six folders, especially that um, uh, Star Wars one. But to be fair, the Star Trek one I was given um, and I carried on the subscription. The Star Wars one. I just stopped collecting in the end. I sort of I handed the subscription over to someone else. Okay, now I need to decide what I'm going to do here. I think I might wait until I've painted this bit green. I'm thinking maybe this top arc around the top here to be silver as well. Maybe I'll put some green down here and just see how it looks. But yeah, it's a good start. Oh yes, I haven't done the inside. So I think I'm going to do that bit. So, that is Conquest. So I suppose the next big release, which has just come out, have some coffee, uh, is the Space Wolves. And of course, I do have Space Wolves Army, but I have to say I haven't bought the Codex I hear, I hear there was some issues with that codex, like some missing stuff, or you've already got to... I can't remember what it was missing now, was it the Warlord traits, or stratagems, or... Anyway, something missing from the codex. Um, let's face it, really, they should have just withdrawn that, but I suppose they can't really withdraw it and reprint them and get them back out in a timely manner, so it's just a PDF solution that's okay I mean I suppose we'll we're quite used to PDFs aren't we that is a very small area to get in I'm gonna need a small dry brush let me get that just gonna stop the camera okay I am back got a small brush so yeah I'm not getting the space walls ultimately I just don't have enough time can't play all my armies. I've made a commitment to Aldar and Tyranids, and I'm just going to stick with that commitment, I think. Okay, what's that? Right, that's looking good. 
So before we move on to that big one, let's get this little thing out of the way. So yeah, so I know I do have you know a good number of subscribers who I think I might hmm that's interesting. That does slide in and out. Oh well, that'd be alright. So I do have quite a number of subscribers that obviously like hmm can't really glue that because I need it to move around to get it into position. Um, that'd be alright. So sadly, you know, I'm sorry about that, but there's just not enough time in the day ultimately. And uh, playing the Necrons, getting ready for the tournament, and I've got my Tyranid list ready to go. I've got my Necron Crazy Pylon list ready to go. And at this moment in time, my buddy is still not around. We were going to play tonight, but he cancelled it. Uh, he's renovating his house. I mean, it's you know, a big renovation. So it's got like three or four extensions on it. Um, and yeah, he's just either very busy doing the house or he's just totally knackered from doing the house. So it's uh, not looking too good in terms of battery ports. So I've got those to do. I mean, luckily I've been playing Richard, which has been... Um, not only great uh, to play obviously a different person and also you know top end tournament player I at least are playing you know playing some games and getting some battle reports done the great thing about playing Richard is he's quite happy to a be on the camera and b take the time to you know roll dice on the camera and make a decent looking battle report uh, when I play my buddy I we don't tend to do that as much. He doesn't generally like being on the camera, etc. So, yeah. Right. So, sadly, I think what I might do is just take this out and look at that. Don't don't you find you go through a lot of paint even with just dry brushing? All right. Let's get some more. So, yeah. More battery ports coming up very shortly. I've got a fantastic game which I had against Richard, which I think is probably my best battery port so far. I think that's going to be coming up soon, probably on Monday, I would have thought. Right, let's try this again. Now, of course, the biggest thing. And the most important thing coming up soon is the orcs. Wow! Yeah, orcs at last are guessing all of their goodies. It's a very exciting release, I have to say. And although I don't actually own an orc army, I do have a big soft spot for orcs. It's the army which I would have, which. Um, you never say, I mean, my, my saying is never say never, but it's the army which I like but would never have. <laughs> uh, mainly because my buddy has it and I don't think it's fair. Um, so I probably will never do walks, but like I said, never say never. <laughs> it does look incredibly exciting, this new release. So we've got this sort of game. Um, like a car game, isn't it? I don't know whether it's the equivalent of Gaslands, maybe. It uh, does look pretty interesting. A bit of paint, is, uh, a bit of primer's come off there. Uh, just get in. Now, in terms of the primer, I used a Wilkinson's own cheap one. Um, what I do for my terrain is I use the, the cheap one, like the Wilkinson's own one, to basically do a layer all over. And then once it's all dried, I'll go in with the Games Workshop one because I like the finish and I like it matching into the rest of my stuff. And I'll just give it a light coating of the Games Workshop one just over the top. Uh, because the the Wilkinson one's a little bit shiny, 
and it's like a satin one and never have having stopped the matte one so that's what I do and you know I hardly put any Gangs Workshop spray on now see it's a lot more expensive but I do like to finish it off as such with the Gangs Workshop one so I did consider painting because this is going to be green of course most of this I did consider spraying it uh, with the green spray Caliban green but that would mean spending another £10 and I figured I'd have the same issues that I've just had spraying with black where it's going to take quite a lot of paint up just to get into all of those nooks and crannies that's quite difficult to see so I abandoned that idea and I thought I would just manually paint them so let me know in the comments if you are excited about orcs. Will you be doing orcs? Do you think they're gonna, there's going to be a lot of new orc players around? Or do you think it's just going to be orc players, you know, existing orc players that have the armies already, are going to be the main ones that we're going to see on the tables? Because with orcs there's a big commitment, isn't there? There's a lot of models and a lot of painting. Do you think this new release will encourage people that don't already have orcs to collect them, you know, to buy, build and paint them? Or do you think this is really just for existing orc players? Now I have, it's very secret, I'm not even gonna say it in here, I'm just going to give you a, what's the word, a teaser, a teaser. So I have recently purchased something from eBay and I am incredibly excited by it. It's something that I've always wanted and it's just for fun and I got what I think is an absolute bargain for what I've got. I obviously will do a video on it, uh, but I, I'm really excited. I've wanted this for years, and I've always been on eBay looking, and it's always been very expensive and and just not just not a good buy or it's not quite what I wanted. I think I found a really good deal. As I said, I'm going to make a video on it. I'm not going to spoil the surprise. I haven't received it yet. I won it, I think, yesterday or the day before. So it's on its way. So as long as it is exactly as in the picture, which I'm sure it is, then I am going to be one happy boy. Yeah, I've just got to decide whether I'm going to repaint it or keep it as it is. Not quite sure yet. I'll see how well it's painted maybe. It's not in my colour scheme but it doesn't necessarily matter because like I said I'm just buying it for fun. Okay. Right. It's amazing how quickly I've gone through my list. I've only got one more thing on the list so I am going to have to uh, ad lib after the next thing I talk about. So the next thing I want to talk about is Facebook. Uh, in particular my Wargamers Unification Facebook group. Yeah, so that's, I've had that now for just over a year. Wow, time's gone so quick. And I think we're on, I can't remember exactly now, but I think we're on 774 I can't remember exactly <laughs> basically we're fast approaching 800 followers on the group which is just awesome and I mean looking at the stats of the the group the amount of interaction with you know a good majority of people is just amazing it's a really great place to be what I love about it is it's for both YouTubers and for hobbyists. So, you know, we get a lot of hobby content and hobby advice and showing 
off you know what people have just painted and we get a lot of people asking for help on the YouTube channel you know we're all giving advice and feedback and comments on our YouTubes we're basically we're trying to support each other as YouTube creators and also as hobbyists so I think it's really really great um, I've met a good number of people in actual fact I met um, Biranid 40k through that Facebook group got to see his channel as you know I did a big shout out for him uh, in the last Tyranid video I think he got a good amount of subscribers from that when I made the video I mean he was growing very rapidly anyway when I made his shout out video he was on 601 subscribers and then by the time the video went up it just hit 700 subscribers and that went up yesterday morning as I'm painting, I'm painting on Friday night and then oh look at that Games Workshop pots, I do love the paints but let's face it the pots are rubbish uh, yeah so yesterday morning and I just had a look just before I came on here and he's just hit 900 subscribers like I said not necessarily all by me because he's naturally growing anyway because well he's proof in the pudding that great content you know great quality of videos and good content and a good personality you know you'll grow on YouTube it makes a big difference having high quality videos so yeah that was awesome and I'm hoping because, because obviously my videos you know they, they get viewed within the first like 24 hours but you know they're viewed after that time as well so I'm hoping my shout will still send people over to him maybe get him up to thousand subscribers we'll get there naturally anyway but yeah it's great to be able to help and I was quite surprised he, he pretty much instantly did a shout out back I said to him you, you know you didn't have to do that I didn't do it for that um, but it was very nice of him and I gained uh, a few subscribers from that as well so that was nice so yeah the Facebook group check us out if you haven't already all you have to do is go into Facebook and search Idic Beer and it should come up if it doesn't come up then yeah it's Wargamers Unification just uh, ask to join will accept you I would like to get if I can to a thousand members by the end of the year that would be pretty awesome I've got quite a few end of year targets actually I need to do this bit inside here now so in 2017 my channel grew uh, four and a half thousand subscribers in a year now bearing in mind I was putting a lot more effort into YouTube than previous years down to my personal circumstances you know, I focused on YouTube and yeah four and a half thousand subscribers in a year I was averaging about a thousand subscribers before I put in all the effort so that was awesome and when it came to 2018 I set myself a huge task I thought well if I can grow four and a half thousand subscribers in a year then I can grow that again and of course you don't just want to like equal your target you want to beat it so I set myself a target of 5,000 subscribers in a year huge target and of course target just a target that doesn't really mean anything it's just it's nice to keep yourself motivated now that meant I worked it out um, after my little subscriber boost in my 10,000 subscriber giveaway that I did it meant that I had to get 417 subscribers each month which is a lot of subscribers now I was actually achieving that all the way up until June and then it went a bit pear shaped so I, I was easily beating 417 nearly 500 um, a month 
And then in June it dropped right off. I was averaging about 200, 250. June, July, again quite quiet. August has picked up and I'm gaining a few more now. Now I think it's a combination of two things. One, it's the summer holiday effect because more people are on holiday, you know, less people watching the telly and watching you know, the internet. The second thing is I obviously made the conscious decision to move from uh, three videos, uh, sorry, five videos or as many videos as I wanted, usually five, sometimes six uh, videos a week to three videos a week. And of course that affected my views because you know less videos, less views. So I think the algorithm thought, hey, my channel's not doing so well, so it probably stopped promoting me as much. Um, so I gained less subscribers. Now I'm still happy with the decision to go to three videos because effectively I've got more time and I needed more time. When I was doing five videos um, a week, I wasn't doing the edits and stuff that I'm doing now. Now I'm trying to make my videos as high quality as I can, so that means you no know, more effort into recording them and editing them. Man, that pot is messy. So I'm happy with the decision and I think I know what's happening. I think basically, like I said, YouTube have thought, you know, he's not so active, uh, so they're not recommending you quite as much, etc. But what will happen, and I think what's happening now, is that the algorithm has recognized that although I'm not uploading as much, I'm re uploading regularly. And YouTube is all about being regular. You know, if you can regularly upload, you'll be regularly in the sidebar and regularly spotted. So I think now that the algorithm realizes, hey, yeah, well, he's not uploading so much, but he's uploading three times a week. It's recognizing when I'm uploading and that I am active and it's promoting me a bit more. And that's why I think my um, an upturn has happened recently. It's taken a, a couple of months. I'm told it takes up to six months for a big change like I've done to actually come into effect, you know, to, for YouTube to really get used to the change. But it's a healthy change. Three videos a week is about right to maintain growth and give myself the time that I need to make the videos and also obviously spend time with my daughter which is the most important thing to me out of everything of course so that's what's happening with the channel so that was one so one milestone was 15,000 subscribers by the end of the year I'm currently as I record this on 12,000 12,727 off memory. So I'm a bit behind now. I should get to 13,000 by the end of September. That means September means October, November, December. Yeah, that means I've got three months to gain 2,000 subscribers. That's a massive task. I doubt it will happen. But you never know, you never know, you might just get a video that pops. They say that for every 10 videos that you upload, only one of them will do well. So only 10% of your uploads will do well. So you never know, I might have a video that just pops and gains me some subscribers and I might hit my target, but I don't think I will, but even so, I'd imagine, I'm in 12, I'm in 13, I'd imagine I should get to 14, which I think 
to gain 4,000 subscribers in a year is you know, an absolute awesome feat. So I'm very proud of that. And I know other channels you know, can grow much bigger than me and much quicker than me, but I'm happy. My channel's a little, little hobby channel. You know, the channels that do grow really, really quick are either like Commissar Gamza, who does rather controversial and odd videos, but love him or hate him, he has a personality that is very difficult not to watch him. <laughs> so um, I think that's why he's done very well. And then you've got obviously the battery ports and the battery port channels do well because they're uploading you know, one, two hour videos and people are watching them all the way through and they're getting fantastic watch time. Now I am trying to improve my battery ports but I don't want to go down the route of making battery ports just for the sake of getting subscribers because that's just not what my channel's about, you know. As my little slogan at the end of my bio says, you know, it's just me and my hobby sharing and caring for the community. And that's that's it basically, you know. Everything you see on my all my videos are basically just what I'm doing in the hobby. You know, whether that's making an army list or painting something or building something. And I think that's what keeps it fun. And also, it means I don't want to do it this professionally. You know, I mean, a lot of YouTubers, even in our niche, you know, have these dreams of being full time YouTubers. I don't want to do that. Um, for me, if I, was, if I was a full time YouTuber, I don't think I would enjoy that, you know. I mean, the fact that it is a hobby and that, you know, I've got to grab time to do it, etc., I think that's what makes it fun, you know. Now, there is a question, of course, well, hey, how about if I lost my job, would I turn to YouTube to try and make the money? I've been thinking about that. Um, you know, especially in today's economic climate, and the answer is I wouldn't. I would turn to the hobby to maybe try and make some money. So I probably do commission work, and yes, I might feature that on the channel and sell my commission stuff through the channel. Not no, well, not the stuff, you know, but the fact that I do commissions. Um, but I wouldn't want to try and make my channel a full-time cool job, you know. How about you guys? Would you seriously want to do this for a, a living? No, I think it sounds good. You know, you say, oh yeah, I just want to pay 40k for a living. Hmm, I don't know. I'm not sure I would. You know, do you really enjoy it? I love it. And it brings me a lot in my life because I have a hobby and YouTube and that is all mixed into one. But I don't know that uh, I would want to do it for life. I honestly wouldn't. Oh, where's the paint gone? Here we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is get my small dry brush and paint in between these bits and then I can wash my small dry brush out because I just realised I've had it just lying there. It's okay, it's just going to be a dry brush but even so. I think these are going to look awesome when they're done. not quite sure what to do about the bases. Maybe you could uh, let me know what you think. So. One thought is just to have them, that green, as if they are part of the construct. Um, possibly having some sand coming sort of up on the edges, like a lot of my other Necron terrain. Or, the other option is to put sand on all of the base. So it almost looks like they're in the sand. 
I think potentially I would do that if I was using my sandboard still. But as you know, I've got my new Gotham Battle mat, which isn't really sand. So I'm probably thinking I'll paint it green and then just have some sand coming up just like the rest of my terrain. Uh, also, okay, it's the brush cleaned. So I've been considering my Get It Painted Challenge, which is gonna be coming up now in November and I'm definitely thinking I might paint my shining spears. Let's just get some paint out. Yeah, I think my Aldar shining spears will be what I'm gonna do. Now, I always get a bit nervous when it comes to Aldar because it means that I've got to prime them with white or potentially gray and I always have a problem with that because I tend to get that chalky thing going on. So what I was thinking of doing, because I don't own um, an air gun, uh, airbrush, so I've got to use spray cans. So I was thinking I might get them out and actually prime them up whilst we've got reasonable weather. You, know? you don't want it too hot and sunny when you're priming then you don't want it to be too cold or you know, too much moisture etc. So I thought while we've got a reasonable uh, time of year I might grab my shining spears out of the case and prime them up ready for the Guess It Painted Challenge. Not quite sure how I'm going to paint them yet because obviously I've got my Etic Aldar colours all of my aspects though, I don't paint um, in the Aldar, in the Idic Aldar colours, in the purple and white. I tend to paint them in their actual aspect colours. And I try to bring the purple and white onto the models. And the Shining Spears of course are uh, blue and white. And I've been looking at some pictures of them. It's going to be quite hard to bring that purple in, I'm thinking. Now I could potentially put the blue stripe that goes onto the bikes. Ooh. <laughs> I was thinking of making that possibly a purple stripe. But I don't know whether that would detract away from the fact that they're shining spears too much. I've got to have a closer look at the models and work out where I'm going to uh, put the colours, but yeah, should be good. I was going to have it in October, the Guess It Painted Challenge, but with the Orc release coming out in October, I figured everyone is going to be doing Orcs, and no one is going to be interested uh, in doing the Guess It Painted Challenge. Now just for reference, Unlike Nick's New Year painting, which I do in January, which is designed to paint a new, you know, something new, a new project, usually a Christmas present, the Guess It Painted Challenge is designed to paint something that you've been meaning to paint for a long time. So I'm using it personally to paint my Aldar. Every year I've generally been painting um, an Aldar model, gradually getting my Aldar army painted. So I don't think people are going to want to do that when there's a load of orcs to paint. So I'm going to move it to November and that means that I've got a little bit more time to paint up my noise marines. Now I'm still thinking, I'm not going to finish them to be honest, it would be great to finish them by the end of November, but I have to be honest as I paint them, <coughs> excuse me. I have to be honest, as I paint them, I'm seriously thinking probably isn't going to happen. We will see. Um, I've, when I lay down that pink, the pink has got to have four layers of pink. 
on each one. And there's 36 noise marines. I've got my work cut out. It's going to be worth it. They're going to look awesome when I'm finished, even if I say so myself. But there's a lot of work to do. But that's fine. So if I'm not finished by November, I, was, I don't think I'll be far off finished. So I can just paint the shining spears. It'll be like a break from painting the noise marines. And then, let's turn that over. The brush is getting a bit wet. And then I can get back to the noise marines once the Guess It Painted Challenge is finished. And that will take us up to, where my, my vision will be, that will take me up to January. And then of course, yeah, in January is the next Nick's New Year Painting Challenge. And I'm just wondering what I'm going to paint for that. I think I will continue with the noise marines. Well, not the noise marines, um, the Sinesh army. And probably paint some demonettes, although I still need to buy a load of demonettes. At the moment, I've just got 20. And ideally for the army, I want two squads of 30. Now, I was hoping, <coughs> and... I did get an email from them. Uh, was it Raging Heroes? They emailed me um, to do a review. Or did I email them? Ah, yeah, I may have emailed them. <laughs> so yeah, I think I emailed them. Oh, that's right. Yes, so I emailed them, and they did actually reply, and they said, "Yeah, we'll, we'll you know, we could do a review." Um, and they they gave me another email address for me to contact. And I emailed that new address, uh, explained the situation, but they no, never got back to me. I think, to be honest with you, I probably asked for too many. <laughs> so what I really want to do is have 30 Games Workshop demonettes and 30 different ones. So I think I asked for 30 to review. <laughs> um, yeah, a bit greedy, wasn't it, really? <laughs> I'm sure they probably would have sent me five, but then I would have had to have bought you know, 25 more. And to be honest with you, they're not cheap, them raging hero things. They do look really good, but they're not cheap. So I'm just going to stick with the Games Workshop ones. I could, of course, try and get some of the old models, um, but again, they're expensive. I've got six, which I was given, and I'm going to use those for objective markers. So yeah, I need to get some demonettes, and of course that means building them, doing all the bases. The bases are hard work. Oh man, I've got loads of stuff to do, but that's fine. It's all, it's all good fun, isn't it? The YouTube channel does put you under pressure to get things done, but also it uh, helps to motivate you to get things done too. So yeah. Right, I've just got these struts in the middle to do. Okay, so the battery ran out. So, um, so yeah, I've got these struts to do here in the middle. And that's the first coat of silver done. I'm gonna do two coats of silver. So this is Iron Breaker. I'm then gonna go in with the bolts gun metal. I have this little system on my Necron. So anything that's basically a vehicle um, or a piece of machinery, is painted with bolt gun metal as a second layer. Anything which is an actual, like, uh, necron as such, you know, an actual, I say man, but it's not a man, is it a robot? Uh, that gets painted with methyl silver over the top of the chain mail. So when I have, for example, a destroyer, I paint the destroyer body with the bolt gun metal as a second coat, and then the actual necron on the top with methyl silver. Now it doesn't make a huge difference. You probably can't really see it when I display them on the showcase, but you know, in the real life, there is a slight difference. Okay. That is the first coat of dry brushing done. I think these are gonna look really, really cool. Okay, so I'm gonna end the video here. 
Really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did enjoy it, please consider subscribing. Hit my icon at the end of the video so you can keep up to date with the wonders of Warhammer 40k. Beam me up!